me. What's up guys, if you're just joining in, I'm waiting to make sure that first off my microphone is testing to work up whenever we try and do these streams and uh, I posted the link to the stream so hopefully it can be shared on Twitter and on YouTube and that you guys are seeing it because I know the notifications are super bad with that what's up guys the otaku Hulk, Diego Martinez Danielle Persuade Vaughn the goat one two three mr. overlord Jason Carroll Bisets, YT trend and W Pathanos Ardell Bailey, Jack Ireland, my boy, what's up guys? I am so happy you're here. Hope you are, hope you had, first off, a very happy Thanksgiving and a happy Black Friday if you managed to get something that you may have found interesting during those deals. Sadly, if you saw in the tag and the description of the video, and if you're here for Twitter, what's up, or from Twitter, I should say, no, this is not Miles Morales on PlayStation 5. This is still Miles Morales on PlayStation 4. I am personally still very shocked on how good the game looks on a PS4 Pro as is. Obviously, the stream quality will mess up with it here and there. But for the most part, on my, you know, TV, you know, set up here in my living room of my house, playing it normally on a base PS4 Pro, runs great. I'm very surprised and looks still good. News to astonish my man Ronnie, what's good, dude? Is amazing, my bro, Mystical Sandra Pacheco, Trenton W. What's up, guys? Definitely everyone go follow and subscribe to News to Astonish and is amazing because they both make great videos on their own channels. News to Astonish did his own playthrough and review and discussion videos about Miles Morales. He did a great job, so definitely go support him. He's fantastic. Kampa King, Mohammed DY Max, Dylan, Heaven, can you come into my live stream sometimes? I'll try, Dylan. Don't worry, I'll try. I, if you guys know me, I barely live stream as is because first off, I'm always super busy, but second off, my living arrangement isn't really the best circumstance for live streaming games. That's why I just like to do videos and just post it and then that's it. Live streaming, like that's why I don't have a Twitch account. People, some people have asked me about that. I'm probably not gonna make one um, because I barely have the time to do it and the setup that I have doesn't really fit well with that whole aesthetic. So just checking, great. So the tweet went out. I'm just waiting for more people to join as well before we get started. What's up, dude? Second, Dayers, Video Keys, UHD, Teat OBG, Rattlesnake Studios. What's up, guys? Let's check. Don't worry, I will start soon because I know I'm always bad. I barely read the chat and I barely start whenever we are streaming because that's how terrible I am with streams. But I thought it's fun because if you guys remember, all the way back in 20, did actually do a full uh, live stream playthrough of Spider-Man PS4 instead of doing a radioactive replay of it which I know you guys probably miss I would hope so but instead of doing that I did a live playthrough of New Game Plus from start to finish with Spider-Man PS4's main campaign as well as uh, what do you call it the uh, DLC um, Let's see, let's just get started right now because I know for a fact it's going to take a while until we get to the actual main, um, you know, plot of the game with that. Subtitles is very strange how to set it up with here, so no background color. I'm not a fan of the subtitle background color. Standard size, that's good. And I also know the volume is probably loud too if I can turn that off. And you, already, you guys already know the, um, what do you call it, the previously on Spider-Man, the recap, so we only really need to do that, but that's great that they put that in there. I was very happy that they included that addition. Uh, although, again, we will get into it once that scene comes up with it, but once they showed the new Peter during the recap, I was like a little bit torn. I'm like, that's not my guy. It's certainly Peter, but that's not, that's not my Peter, but still, great. This game, by the way, I did my review of it in case you guys missed it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I certainly love the inclusion of Miles' cultural heritage more in his character involvement in this game compared to Spider-Man PS4, and since this is a core Miles story, there's a lot more to dive into. Franco, my man, the main mod here, I'm doing just fine, bro. Regina George, hey, Evan, shout out to my friend Javi Priority, which follows you since 2016. Love you, bro. Thank you so much, Regina. That means the world to me. I can't believe you stuck around this long. That is truly exceptional thank you so much hopefully i've been able to do you guys and all you viewers justice with the videos news reports 
discussions, all that. So I think we're, we're pretty much set here. I will pause and then turn down the set the audio of the game because I know that was that's probably a little bit loud for this um, right now. So here, subtitles are on. Audio. Let's do everything at like five because I know it'll probably get super loud. Or why not? Let's do six just in case. Speech volume, UI volume. Yeah, everything just six. Sound effects too. That's at five for audio balance. We'll do we'll do six because I know the, how intense the audio gets with this. That's like the first thing to check whenever I do these live streams is, is the audio at normal level and is my voice actually emitting from the microphone? Sometimes it's not. Yes, Trendon. Yes, the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. We did it. I, I honestly have no clue how... So if you guys don't know, which you should, that line is from the GameSpot review for Miles Morales. The crazy thing about it is that the person who reviewed Miles from GameSpot is a person of color. So it's not like it's just some random white guy being, you know, trying to be hip or whatever, or just spoke out of tongue. It's someone who knew what they were saying, and yet they said it anyway. So that's just like the craziest thing. Um, Ronnie, a new Sasanich, when do you think you'll be able to get a PS5? Excellent question. So, um, and also to quickly answer another question, Mr. Hapa, Hapa, Hapu, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, are you going to live stream the Game Awards? I know a lot of people are speculating, could we receive some teaser or whatever for Spider-Man 2? during the Game Awards. I think it's too early for that. It would be cool. If anything, what could happen is that we could receive a teaser for Spider-Man in the Avengers to appear during the Game Awards, which could be interesting. But uh, sadly, I've always attended the Game Awards in person since 2017. So this is the first year, sadly, because of COVID, I'm not gonna be able to go there in person. But if I'm able to, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I could try and set something up, but I will see if, if, if it looks like something interesting will be announced there for Marvel or even, you know, Gotham Knights or Suicide Squad or whatever. To, uh, let me know. And uh, for Ronnie's question, I have not got a PS5 yet. Uh, luckily, PlayStation, and I, I will try and find a photo and maybe post it later on Twitter or something. Uh, I was there outside of my local mall in California uh, to try and secure one late night camping for Black Friday. I was the first in line before any of it happened, before the store opened and all that. But then security had to come in and say, you know, we're backing off. You know, we're not allowing campers to kind of your social distancing and all that, which is great. Safety first. So we're going to make you go back and then line up closer to the store's opening. Oh, the tracksuit. I wasn't even knowing I was wearing the suit. Will... We'll stick with this suit, why not? Um, and I was there and then I moved, they moved everyone who was there early, like myself, out of line. So I pretty much lost my spot even though I was first to go in line at my mall. Didn't get one, sadly, which is a bummer. But uh, luckily, PlayStation themselves said that they are going to have more, hopefully, in stock by the end of the year. So I know that they'll probably have that maybe at around mm, like a week before Christmas, maybe? You, you know that they gotta you know stock up on those holiday sales somehow. Um, so when I try and do that, I'll obviously have been trying to get digitally, you know, through like their websites and stuff on online consumer markets. And in person, I prefer uh, in-person shopping the most. Um, so it's definitely gonna be a issue for me to try and get one for sure, but hopefully I can manage to possibly acquire one closer down the line near Christmas. Probably not, that's probably wishful thinking since it's such a hot item, but uh, who knows what is going to happen. And if so, I already have, you know, on the bright side, possible bright side, I do already have uh, Miles Morales on PS4 obviously, but I also bought the Ultimate Launch Edition for the PS5 version of Miles Morales, just in case. So it's like, well, even though I don't have a PS5, at least I have the main game that I will play on the PS5 instead, which is great. So in case it doesn't work out, I'm at least content with knowing that I got the game that I'm wanting to play. And if it, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But mainly, it could be great if um, instead, it would be insane if... I don't get one now, but wait until whenever they announce the official sequel for this, or mainly I should say the last game with Marvel Spider-Man 2, which I'm theorizing, I think it makes the most sense, is going to be a fully exclusive 
PlayStation 5 game. Not a cross-gen game like Miles is, but it's only going to be on PS5. And that is when I think we'll receive a PS5 bundle of Spider-Man with the black suit symbiote logo on it. Black, you know, like everyone's asking, does the PlayStation 5 come in black? The answer right now is no. But down the line, what if they put out a symbiote themed PS5 bundle? Ah, chef's kiss. That would be beautiful if, if done that way. But right now, don't have one. That's okay. I'm, I'm assuming uh, Miles looks even better on that console compared to this on the PS4 Pro. But for now, I'm still pretty impressed with how Miles looks in comparison to um, Spider-Man PS4, which just came out two years ago, which still looks great now. And the fact, again, super consumer-friendly move that they included the new suits in Spider-Man PS4 with the Amazing Spider-Man suit, the Armored Advanced suit, which I'm not a fan of, and the Arachnid Rider suit for free on a game that's two years old now, even if you're not able to acquire a PS5, is fantastic. And it has our boy John. As Peter, so that's a that's a win in and of itself. Um, another question from Chris Martinez, Evan would oh I missed it I'm so sorry. Um, really quick before we start this whole fight, Evan would you go crazy if Insomniac lets you play as Venom in Spider-Man 2? Absolutely, Chris. I think we all would. I mean, to I guess reference Ultimate Spider-Man, that's the best game, and I feel like main game that really had you play as Venom in like an open world setting. If you remember, you could also play as Venom in Marvel Nemesis and also the Marvel Capcom fighting games, but mainly a, a main Marvel-related title. Marvel Nemesis also lets you play as Venom as well, but the main Spider-Man game that lets you play as, besides friend or foe, I guess, which we don't really talk about, but a main Spider-Man game, AAA style, that lets you play as a villain in an open-world setting with a massive story tailored to it was obviously Ultimate Spider-Man. So if that happens, again, with Harry as Venom in Marvel Spider-Man 2, I'm gonna flip out, and I would love that so, so much. And obviously, what's more intriguing for me personally is that we're going to be able to experience what I'm assuming now, since they've teased it twice, it's not really looking like it's gonna be Eddie as Venom, but rather Harry, and how that could affect their, fr you know, the friendship and the overall relationship that Peter has built up with Harry since high school to now. And even another question someone was asking, does Harry know that Peter is Spider-Man? I don't think so. I know we know MJ knows, and there's a line in here in Miles where he's doing the hollow training in, in uh, at ESU, and he says directly, "Oh, when he's fighting Vulture, he says, "Oh, what kept me going was Harry and MJ cheering me on." But was that Harry cheering Spider-Man on or cheering Peter on as Spider-Man, which was a little slight line of dialogue that you get from that moment, but was he inferring that he's aware that Peter is Spider-Man or that he knows that he has powers or something? Or he, he knows his dual identity? Because Mary Jane knew in high school as well. Uh, Peter told MJ and she found out, you know, Peter getting in a fight with... So I'm very curious to see exactly how that works. Wait! Oh! Photo opportunity, please! I know the spider sense is going off. Oh, a little dance move there. Nice. I can't really take a photo because the chat's on the screen, too, but that's pretty hype. God, this scene, too, by the way, is just crazy seeing uh, Miles help Peter out, but also you see Peter fight Rhino simultaneously while doing stuff. Okay, he's kind of morphing into Peter right there. That's sick. Even though it's definitely not the photo I wanted, that's still hype. And seeing him also as well on the PS5 visuals is just like... Crazy, I bet, because I love this suit. Just seeing them together is fantastic. All right, enough fanboying. But yeah, I think playing as Venom would be, first off, a huge drawing point of the sequel. But second off is Harry being Venom again. That whole notion of it's not Eddie, it's Harry. And how does that affect, you know, the connection that he has with Peter, if at all any? If he knows Peter's Spider-Man, and what does he recall after being encapsulated in that the Nickelodeon slime tank for two years now? You know, since it's been one year since the events of the first game, the first game take pl took place in 2018, and Harry was there at the end of it when that occurred. So does that mean that Harry has been in there for two years now? Stuck like that? Like, that's very cool. Or interesting of a, uh, you know, a notion, if that's the case. Um, are we still streaming, guys? For some reason, it said my internet connection was disconnected briefly on the screen. I hope it's still streaming, because I know how terrible this... That's why I also don't live stream as much, because I know that the internet is 
Terrible. Hunter, the FNAF fan. I love this channel. Thank you, Hunter. Love you, bro. Price Gaming, yes, we are. Great. Thanks, Pricey. It's crazy. That's, I don't trust myself with streams. I, I'm very not a, a, equipped with the streaming equipment, setup in general. It's just not good for me. Whew, but also for the sequel, you already know. Oh, God. These visuals are already fantastic. They got to amp up the swinging tenfold when it comes to Peter uh, compared to the air tricks that we now have with Miles. Holy sheesh. Like, wow, that actually hit him. I thought that was not going to hit him since I was so high up. But, yeah, the momentum and traversal that Peter uh, has in comparison to Miles now is not suited for speed or style or flair because obviously I love the swinging in the first game. It still holds up to this day. But once you play Miles and see the swinging in this compared to that, you understand, like, they're just getting started with the swinging. Like, they know what to improve upon. My god, they're really high up. Uh, they know what to improve upon, obviously. They know where they're going next uh, in terms of including faster traversal for Spider-Man's skill set because of what? Is it the Venom powers? It's close. It's the symbiote, which I obviously know, which I think we can all guess at this point, that that is the core factor that they're going to promote and incorporate the most within the gameplay of the sequel. So obviously, like, why is, you know, why should I think about the Spider-Man sequel when I can easily play Miles or the first game remastered on PS5? And it's like, oh, I don't know. You ever heard of Venom? Not Miles is Venom, but Venom Venom, like the symbiote. Oh, and there's Harry as Venom, and uh, there's, um, oh, I, I should have saved the baby, because I don't know if you guys saw this, but if you don't save the baby, Rhino will actually assault you. What if I don't hit this? Oh, okay. All right. So that also happens when you don't save the baby, but instead, Peter comes in and swings in and saves the baby for you instead of Miles. So, a little cool addition there when it comes to the gameplay limitations of the QTEs. But God, this whole opening sequence, the mall, the Christmas themes, JJ, of course, but just the seamless transitions from cinematic to gameplay to QT to more game. Love it. They did that phenomenally in the first game, too, but they, they, they obviously improved it here in this. Um, yeah, but I think the symbiote, I think we've already talked about this thousands of times, but I definitely think the symbiote is going to be the main inclusion of what they're going to draw you as the consumer in. Like, well, why, like, we're back to New York a third time in the sequel? Like, well, no, I would hope so, because I know there's that rumor going around that he could be going to Tokyo, which would be very interesting if that happens, but I hope not as of right now. Instead, I hope they just stick in New York and keep it like this, but expand it to Brooklyn and Queens. I think that's what a lot of us are hoping for, actually. Um, Tokyo would be very interesting and would also speak to my persona fandom of it as well. But as it stands right now, I hope they stay in New York. I hope they expand the district further, you know, the different areas and different boroughs to explore in the other island. But if they completely go and like, oh, we've explored New York. Christmas theme aesthetic. So if they take it to Tokyo, and then also have you wear the black suit in Tokyo as Spider-Man with Miles now as his own Spider-Man. That's going to be crazy. So I don't know what their plan is, but I'm very curious to learn more about what would happen. Yo-Yo Flamingo, I want Tokyo to be in the game badly. Is that what you said? I want Tokyo to be in the game, bro. Really? So, hmm, it's curious. I should probably run a poll on that. Uh, Mango, what PS are you playing on? I'm playing on my PS4 Pro. The limited edition, by the way, Spider-Man red and white spider-themed console. So, on brand, as you would expect, but um, playing on PS4 Pro still looks fantastic, if I do say so myself. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious. Let me get, uh, know in the comments, you guys, would you like to see Spider-Man in Tokyo for the sequel? Um, I personally would not, because I think that's getting close to a far-from-home situation. Rhino beating up Peter, again. Totally missed it with that takedown, but I still love that, seeing them fight on the side while you're doing superhero stuff as Miles. Um, yeah, you know, I hope that they do not put him in New uh, Tokyo. I want them to keep him in New York, but if they do that, it would feel very far from home, which kind of relates to the possible conspiracy that's going on, is that the reason why they had to change Peter is because they want to apply it more towards the MCU crowd since far from home made $1 billion, the highest grossing Spider-Man film ever made. Uh, the only reason why that is, though, is because of Endgame, Avengers Endgame. The only reason why the movie did so well is because of that solid reason for it. Um, if not, if Endgame did not come out, I can guarantee you 
that it would probably still go to, I think Spider-Man 3 was the highest grossing Spider-Man film before uh, Far From Home came out. But because Far From Home made a bit, so much money, and, you know, obviously, of course, we're all curious to see, oh, snap, we're all curious to see what's going to happen with Spider-Man 3 in the MCU. Not myself, because I, I wasn't a fan of Far From Home. Uh, but I know a lot of people after Spider-Verse and obviously the rumors that are going on is that is Toby and Andrew gonna appear for the sequel or for Spider-Man 3 I mean in the MCU and if they have to associate it with that version of the character that's so financially profitable right now and the games are also super financially profitable then they would want to build off upon that by making the main character Peter Parker look like the current live-action Peter Parker that is in the MCU and that being Tom Holland now my, my issue still stands I would not want this version of Peter to look like anyone. Like, I would still be upset if this, if the face of Peter still looked like um, any other person that we've seen, like Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, even Nicholas Hammond from the, you know, the early TV sh series of Spider-Man. John looks super unique for this role, uh, for his more mature aesthetic. And the fact that he's 23 in real life just, you know, nails the point home even further, which is fantastic. Um, nothing against Ben Jordan, he's just doing his job, but I think the in-game model of Ben in the remaster from the scenes that I've seen since like I don't own a PS5 and I haven't played the remaster for myself, it does not fit the mature aesthetic that this Peter represents in the story. I, I would have believed if this Peter was um, in high school or even a college freshman, but he, in this universe he's graduated college and he's been Spider-Man for nine years in this game. You know, one year after the first game in Miles, it's a year after some. Now that means Peter's been Spider-Man for nine years. Insane. Mango, I completed this game 100% on my PS4 Pro and it looks amazing. Yes, it does. Mango, you're absolutely correct. I am astonished. You know, like I honestly said, like they're including the the new suits uh, with the amazing Spider-Man on uh, the Arachn Rider and the, uh, what you call it? Arachn Rider, an Armored Advanced Suit and Amazing Spider-Man on the PS4, and it still looks fantastic even on the current console. Remaster obviously looks graphically way better, and I will say that to Ben Jordan's benefit, or to the, you know, to their own accord. I, I've said Ben Jordan visually, from a graphical standpoint, looks incredibly more detailed than John. Uh, I just think that the, the way that he's distributed and portrayed in the role looks way too young for what I've seen as a Spider-Man in nine years in. So I just, that's the, my main gripe and the fact that the expressions and emotion that they're saying from him uh, was supposed to be better fitted for Yuri Lowenthal's performance when in reality there's scenes in the main game, specifically the final moments during the Doc Ock fight and Aunt May's death scene, where he, he uh, Yuri's voice does not look like it's synced with Ben Jordan's face model and it, it's way less expressive as well. Um, there are other moments where it's vice versa, where actually you do see the improvements with Ben's model. Specifically, the scene that I'm talking about is where he is uh, discovering the secret, you know, hidden area of Martin Lee's little lair in the fee shelter, his hidden office. Um, and he's like, did you find what you're looking for, Peter? And he's like, but the bombs are still out there. Who knows what they plan next? You know, he's talking to Martin Lee while Aunt May is right there being very sus about the whole matter too. That scene does a great job of showing the enhancements of Ben's model compared to John. I get it. I just think that the main scenes that we as fans saw Peter struggle in, fight through, you know, persevere with, with Otto and Aunt May, uh, do not hold up in comparison to John, in my opinion. But again, it's, it's hard for me to say fully because I have not yet played the remaster for myself. So I need to play it fully through, uh, experience Ben Jordan's Peter on a personal level while playing it instead of just seeing it on the cutscene, but play through it, play as Ben's Peter, even though it's still Yuri through and through with the voice, the sad fact is we're not looking at Yuri or even, you know, whoever when we're playing the game from the PS4 version or the PS5 version, we're looking we're seeing the character, and it just so happens that that character in the first game, or the PS4 version, was John Bubniak, and then now it's Ben Jordan. So, it's hard, you know, it, it is what it is now, we can't go back to it, and there's no um, harsh intention towards the developers for all the work that they put into trying to make the best out of the situation they're in, 
or the choice that they made, given that that's their creative decision. I just personally do not agree with it and would prefer John to come back. But still, we're past that now. That's my two cents on the matter. I just hope that they can utilize Ben and his face model for Yuri's performance as the best possible outcome going forward into the sequel. Because we have to keep in mind is that the remaster was overlaying Ben's facial animations with Yuri's performance, even though John had already filled that role. So they were pretty much overlaying another model with a newer face. So it's very strange, which is why what we're gonna see here, it does look better in Miles' game compared to the remaster, because they, they started with Ben from the ground up instead of redoing scenes and going back to fit the initial performance with John with Ben. Another reason why I don't stream is because phone's always ringing. It's always busier, so I apologize if you see that. Uh, Mr. Appa, do you think Najee could come back? I missed that comment. Do you think Najee could win best performance compared to Ashley Johnson as Ellie from The Last of Us 2. Very hard decision. I, uh, if you guys know, do not like The Last of Us 2's story, but as performances go, I do think Ashley Johnson did a fantastic job with what she was given as Ellie. Same thing goes for Laura Bailey as um, Abby as well. I think they either one of them could win for best performance, but I think right now, as it stands, I would love to see Najee win, I just didn't feel as much emotional impact from him compared to Yuri. Um, same thing goes where, shockingly, if you guys missed it, Sandra Saad, who's the main voice and motion capture actress for Kamala Khan from the Avengers game, actually won Best Performance at the Golden Joysticks Awards over Laura Bailey and Ashley Johnson, which is crazy. So at the Game Awards, I don't think she's nominated for Best Performance, uh, Sandra Saad. Naji is. But I don't know if his performance uh, impacted me as much as I would have liked it to. He did a great job, but not as good as I think Yuri, for example. And again here, looked insane that Peter is way younger than Miles. That's, a, that's just... Mm. Now you could say that like I'm 22, he's 24 in this universe. I almost said 23. He's 24 in this game. I'm 22. I understand that everyone looks different with their age depending on who you are. But for a person who's been under so much stress and trauma and heartbreak and, you know, vigorous fighting as a, spy as a superhero, as Spider-Man, for nine years at that point, you would think he would look more mature in comparison to how he does now with his more youthful aesthetic. Again, I think it would have fit fine at, for a college freshman, Peter Parker, or even maybe high school, but for a Spider-Man who's been doing this for nine years, John fit that to a T. And it's not about the performance or anything, it's about the aesthetic of the character that they've made for their own narrative that they're telling. Let's see, we wore the tracksuit, we're getting in a phone call with Genki, let's move on to... Should we do it right now, the Spider-Verse suit? I, I, let's do it, I, I know a lot of you guys probably want to see it, let's, let's just go for it. Uh, I'll do this one, Vibe the Verse, and we'll do the onomatopoeia one, the BAM. Pow wham. Um, these are, by the way, the main suit mods that I use and visor mods is the Air Tricks one to get more venom because that helps out a lot with combat and traversal and webs because you guy upgrade those webs somehow and it fits perfectly. But yeah, uh, Chris Martinez, Ashley was sure going to win best performance. Najee did good, but wasn't anything special. I agree. And that's not to diss Najee or anything. That's uh, totally in agreement with you. Uh, Chris, because he did a fantastic job uh, in the role, but I think in terms of emotional depth and layers of the character that we've seen with these core cast members, I think there was a lot more to unpack with Ellie in The Last of Us 2 with Joel and even Abby as well, even though I'm not fond of the character of Abby, you do get a lot of perspective of her character within the game and the story that they told with that. Let's see. To the Miles special. And I, I love how the tricks work so flawlessly with the swinging like that. Fantastic. Um, and what I figured out is it's kind of like, like almost like Street Fighter where I was, when in reality, if you, you don't know, you can do the trick, press and hold square and push the directional pad wherever you want to go once and then it'll, st it'll stay like that while you're moving in whatever direction. So it's not like you have to hold back and forth and all that. You have to just 
click it in the, in the way that you want to go, and then he'll do that while you're still holding down square. Um, which is why I love those dives he does, the flip and the, the dive bomb and the, all that, just like, like this, we can do it, hold on. So square is a bullet dive, forward is that sky dive, and then back is the hands front dive, which is probably my favorite one, the free fall dive. Oh, it's so good. Hands out, looking suave. I know we're supposed to be going to Genki, but this song, I know I'm probably going to get copyright, but this, you know, uh, Cuddy and Jaden back together with this musical cue is, like, insane. Oh, this too, the hard beats going in, like, wow. You know, swinging around with this for the first time, uh, you know, we knew in advance because uh, Brian Horton confirmed that they were going to include that in the game. But hearing it in this moment while you're swinging while Peter just left, you're by yourself, on my own, that's the name of the song, is so perfect. It's so good to fit with the character and the, and the narrative that's being told here. Woo! Oh, I love that little hand trick out. Oh, man. So, yeah, seeing this right now, how they're going to improve it even further with Peter in the sequel, with the black suit, with his traversal, is gonna be nuts. Let me tell you something. If they add the symbiote in that as well, like, you know, like fat, and like the symbiote makes him faster, stronger, and of course more aggressive. But in the sense of traversal, how, like, if you incorporate the venom powers with that, how is it going to look with the symbiote? If they're going to do like a symbiote jump or a symbiote dash or something, I do not know, but I am pumped to see that happen. I am so ready. I was so mad when he didn't get nominated for best music. Yes, dude. Whoa, oh my God. Dropped my controller, of course. In the spite of mid-rage, I dropped my controller. But, absolutely agree. They were snubbed. Yeah, Mr. Hapa, I'm so mad when Miles didn't get nominated for best music. You are 100% correct, my friend. That is a travesty, especially with the description that Brian Horton gave about it with John Paisano, Lecrae, uh, Kid Cudi, Boy Wanda as well. Oh, he just puts that on. That on. Okay, I thought he was going to wear the other costume like he did last time, but he just puts on that suit? All right. Uh, yeah, uh, super, super snub. Same thing. Like, I really liked, what's his name? Roger Clark, who won as uh, Arthur Morgan. From No, actually, was that... Am I wrong about that? Did he win Best Performance in 2018's Game Awards, or was it Christopher Judge as Kratos? I feel like it was Roger Clark who won as R Arthur Morgan because of Red Dead 2, and he totally deserved that. But I think for Best Performance and Best Score, Yuri and John Paisano were snubbed in 2018, in my opinion. Red Dead was great. God of War was also great. The story of God of War did not connect with me as much as I would have liked it to compared to other people. Uh... But winning game of the year was definitely deserved for that game. Um, we'll stick with Spider-Verse for now. Um, but yeah, man, a few, like what they did with that game musically for this, for Miles, was a testament to John Paisano's creativity. Uh, if you guys don't know, John Paisano was the com composer for this game, and he also did Daredevil. You know, the Netflix Daredevil series is also what he's known for. And it's fantastic. Like, just how he incorporated all that within Miles' character as well is so good. You know, in this game's universe, he's a beats maker. So unlike Spider-Verse, where he's an artist and a graffiti artist, he's actually, like, more in touch with music instead of street art. He likes street art, but he's mainly, he makes beats in his free time. Uh, you also get that connection with Aaron Davis and Jefferson Davis and their background with that, which is very cool. But, man, like... It fit with the narrative. It was super incredibly different from the first game. Uh, it had a lot more fluidity and variety with it compared to the orchestral score for the first game. But it had that orchestral vibe with a new flair to add Miles' character more depth. Um, geez, Louise, it was so good. Astounding, honestly. And the Christmas setting, too, with all this as well. Just, man, I love it. I'm a sucker for stuff like this. And by the way, uh, epic fail. Uh, two things. One, that trick, which we will do multiple of. This trick right here, if I can do it, is straight from Spider-Man 3. Uh, I got out of it. I, I didn't mean to turn left. Uh, that, you know, front pike, 
where his legs are sticking out. That's straight from Spider-Man 3, the game. And right there is straight from the new animated series, baby. I was so happy when they put that full swing animation in from that show into this. You have no clue. We saw that in the Spider-Verse gameplay demo, but we kind of saw it out of context when he was twirling. And it kind of looked like he did it, but the full front yo-yo swing when he goes straight forward is... Mm, that already makes this game of the year for me. That or Persona 5 Royal are my picks for game of the year. Chris Martinez, his black suit combat should be more brutal in the sequel. Absolutely. I want, I put this on Twitter too. Um, the black suit, in my opinion, I know a lot of people have different uh, opinions and that's totally fine about who they view Peter's main nemesis as. Either that's Dr. Octopus or Green Goblin. For me, and I know a lot of people don't agree with this, I think it's Venom. Or at least, in this case, maybe not necessarily Eddie Brock, but primarily the symbiote when it gets on Peter. And once he realizes it's not, you know, for his benefit, it likes, it's trying to take over him. And it represents the best of what Peter represents. You know, great power, great responsibility. So what happens when you acquire too much power and abuse it for, the, for your own personal gain? And, you know, and what does that power do to the people surrounding you and all that? So narratively, I hope they go above and beyond with the narrative implications and inclusions for what the symbiote can do to Peter and specifically how that means we're going to see or hear I should say Yuri Lowenthal as Black Suit Spider-Man. I cannot even begin to describe what that is going to do to me on a personal level. Hearing Yuri Lowenthal as this Spider-Man, which is my personal favorite Spider-Man in any form of media, have that Black Suit uh, narrative involved with him and his Peter and how that's going to affect him personally. I'm not ready for that at all. I am nowhere near ready for that and I cannot wait to see how that's going to include when he ends up finding out that Harry is Venom or he, he sees him with the symbiote on and Norman's trying to save him with the symbiote. Like what's the symbiote doing to or for Harry since it's trying to be like a healing agent on him? Is it really helping him or is it hurting him more or something? Because it will obviously see him turn into Venom at some point, but we also need the symbiote to somehow latch itself onto Peter. Uh, because in that regard, it has to first get onto Peter to then make Venom, at least in the 616. In the Ultimate version, they did it a bit differently where whoever wears the symbiote turns into Venom regardless. So they could be going that route, but I think in this regard, it's not an alien life form. It's like more of a scientific thing that it's relating towards. So again, if that's the case, how is that going to affect Peter on that level? Because we still saw him have that emotional anger in the Ultimate Comics, even if it was some scientific formula, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, how that's going to work out, I am pretty much, that's the most, you know, important thing that I'm wondering about the story. Not necessarily the gameplay, because we know it's going to be fantastic. We've already seen the clear upgrades from Spider-Man PS4 onto Miles just with the swinging and the combat alone. So I already know, like the symbiote inclusion, making him faster, stronger, more aggressive, that's already gonna be there. Swinging is surely gonna have a complete overhaul too, especially since I'm assuming it's gonna be a PS5 exclusive only. And um, the story is where I'm the most interested towards, because that is at least why us as fans, or at least me as a fan, love these games so much, is because of the characterization of Spider-Man and his portrayal, Yuri's portrayal, as Peter Parker. And if they do that in a darker route with the symbiote included, I'm gonna be so happy. Um, Big Meech, I totally agree. I don't wanna see Rhino anymore, me neither. He overstayed his welcome in this game. So I think that it's gonna be fine if we don't see him at all again in the sequel. Although, spoilers, which we can talk about if you have not beat Miles Morales yet, just be forewarned. Um, sequel, pretty much confirmed. Obviously, Harry is super teased to be Venom, but also is that Dr. Kurt Connors, who we already knew existed in the first game with one of the backpacks that you could find, um, is going to be the Lizard. And in this universe, he's already been the Lizard. It's not like we're going to see him transform into the Lizard for the first time. The Lizard already has be or Kurt Connors has already become the Lizard in this game's universe. Uh, in the first game, Peter finds a backpack, one of the backpacks that you can find, says, oh... It's a vial of Dr. Connor's blood that I was able to find and you know, reconfigure it to transform him out of being the lizard. Too bad it didn't last. So clearly, 
he has been back and forth from being a lizard within this universe, and we don't necessarily know what his connection is to Peter. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it like Otto's, you know, connection to Peter? Or does he really know him on a personal level? Maybe in the sequel, since he's saying in the end of Miles he wants to be a teacher, which I'm super hyped about, by the way. Science teacher Peter Parker is one of the best representations of Peter Parker in the mainstream comics. If we get that and he's working with Dr. Connors alongside of Peter, and what if they're making... I just thought of this. What if Peter finds a job as a scientist with Dr. Connors, he's working alongside of him, but they're working to find the formula to help save Harry? And what if it goes wrong, and in turn that transforms him into Venom? And then, depending on whether or not Lizard is good or bad in this universe, if they if they have to, have to also deal with Lizard uh, threatening people in New York City while also figuring out what's going on with Harry and the symbiote, that would be so sick if they did that. Especially seeing how different that could be uh, in comparison to Peter working at Otto Octavius Industries and now possibly working at where he is now. Uh, either at Midtown High or Brooklyn Vision, seeing that that's where Miles is currently residing, which I still am confused about. It was very obvious Miles was attending uh, Midtown High in the first game, and now all of a sudden he, I guess, transferred schools to that in this. I'm not necessarily sure about that, but it's interesting regardless. But yeah, seeing what exact dynamic relationship Peter has with Dr. Connors uh, in the sequel, since we already got some of that in the first game with Peter and Norman Osborn. You're like, hey, Peter, Harry's gonna come back in like a week or so, or, uh, you know, early next year, I should say, what he said in the game. Um, maybe you should start about, think about that business you guys start, you thought of, like, you know? Connections, oh, wow, this is like the brightest my face has been thanks to freaking Simon Krieger, which a lot of people say, like, people say that uh, Ben Jordan as Peter Parker looks like Tom Holland. People, for some reason, I don't see it personally. People say that Simon Krieger looks like Topher Grace. I, I personally do not see that. I get what what they're talking about, but I, I personally don't see that with, with Simon Krieger. That is hilarious, though. Um, although Troy Baker does a great job of being a dick, as always. That's, that's his specialty. That's what he's known for. Um, a right, it's good they fixed the Miles School thing. His bio says he stayed in Brooklyn at the time. Yeah, but wasn't he obviously in Midtown High in the first game? So did they retcon it that he always was at Brooklyn Visions, or was it that he transferred schools? Because in the flashback, he says, I'm going to go to Brooklyn Visions, uh, you know, soon, starting next week or whenever, to Finn. But then that was a flashback before Miles met Peter, and Miles, in the first game, when he met Peter, was still attending Midtown High. Uh, I don't know. And again, that's the conspiracy theory going around, is that they have to try and make the game synonymous with what's going on in the movies. And in the movies, Miles was attending Brooklyn Visions, and I know that's a thing in the comics, too, with the lottery and all that, but it was primarily portrayed the most recently in, in Into the Spider-Verse compared to any other form of media, not in, uh, certainly not in the animated series or the comics, because in the animated series he attends Horizon High with Peter, and that, like people say Miles is a carbon copy of Peter, uh, not in Spider-Man PS4 in my opinion, and certainly not in Spider-Verse, but definitely in, is the case in the Marvel Spider-Man TV show on Disney XD, that is a straight carbon copy of Peter if I've ever seen one. Um, let's see if I can get down here, boom, out we go, woo! Up and away, Venom dash towards you, and then take down over here. Great, but yes, uh, maybe Spider-Man will make an appearance in Spider-Man 2. Oh, Spider-Gwen, well, I'm sorry. Spider-Gwen will make an appearance in Spider-Man 2. I certainly hope not. Very interesting idea, uh, and I know that they teased that in their previous, like, little Daily Bugle posts, saying, oh, you know, how many Spider-People are there? Not like Spider-Verse, but they actually said, like, how many other people are going around in costumes? Um... And of course, there's rumors, all, not rumors, but there's like factual evidence uh, from the previous game and what Insomniac have said on Twitter in the past years that Gwen Stacy is clearly alive in this universe. She's not dead and she does not know Peter. At least maybe not uh, what we know. Maybe she could be like the ultimate version of Gwen where she's a teenager and furthermore with the, uh, you know, Spider-Verse version where, or the you know, comics as well, where Spider-Gwen and Miles have a relationship with each other. 
very strange, but it's just one of those different versions of the universe. So if they include Gwen, which I definitely assume she's alive in this world, um, is she going to be like 616 Gwen, where she's a love interest for Peter? But since he's already with MJ, you wouldn't want to really mess with that uh, unless he gets with Felicia Hardy, which you guys already know is my go-to canon ship uh, between Peter and his love interest. But it looks like he's sticking with MJ, which is fine. They've totally settled things now. They're a cute couple. They've, you know, gone on record saying that they love you to each other at the Silver Lining DLC. So that's already, you know, attached thoroughly with their connection. So if they make Gwen as a side character in the sequel to connect to Miles more instead of Peter, that would be very interesting. I would not mind that, but I just hope that they don't go to Spider-Verse route with it. Like, that's the problem. Like, um, I know that they said that they were starting to make the narrative for this game before Spider-Verse even was out. You know, they did it before the, the movie even released. And that, that you know, Miles was going to be more stylish with his attire and, and the music uh, aesthetic and all that, too. And he just so happened to wear a, a, a costume with the sportswear suit that looks very similar to the Jordan suit that he wears in Spider-Verse. So apparently what they've said, that was already in plan before the movie came out. I just find it very coincidental that there's so many things from each medium that's, you know, slowly dripping over into the game. Peter looking like Tom Holland from the movies, Miles acting and, you know, being similar to the most popular version of him with Spider-Verse. So, I don't know. There's a lot going on. Whether or not it's for the best, we will see. But, yeah. I'm curious myself, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not reading all your guys' comments because I'm, I'm answering so many people's questions. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, a. Wright, hey Evan, how do you think Miles will react to Peter in the black suit? Very negatively, I would assume, or pretty maybe cool at first before it starts to take over Peter mentally and physically. But maybe like, that's a cool suit, Peter. Where'd you get that? Like, oh, you know, I found it, you know, with something going on. Ethan, my man. Ethan Castillo, how's it going, buddy? Hope you're doing okay. Your artwork is fantastic as always. Everyone go follow Ethan right now online. Just fantastic artwork for Marvel and DC and all characters you can think of. He's fantastic. Um, and thank you so much for stopping by, Ethan. Tell your dad I say hi. I hope you guys are doing, staying safe as well. Um, let's see. But I think, to answer your question, uh, A, right, is that I definitely think maybe at first Miles will be connecting with Peter through the suit and like, wow, like, like tag teaming thoroughly with him wearing it. Uh, but then after a while, you'll see, you'll slowly see the, de the deterioration of Peter's mental state and how ferocious he can be while wearing it. And that's the big theory that's going on right now. Very cool to see Miles unmasked while wearing this, which I hope they carry over into the sequel as well with Peter doing this, because that would be fantastic. Um, is have the symbiote go on to Peter. Peter starts to get more angry. He starts to go after Norman, who may potentially become Green Goblin in the sequel. I think he will. And Miles has to fight Peter while wearing the black suit. That's the big theory that's going on right now, is that we will eventually have a boss fight either one of two ways. We will either A, fight Miles as Black Suit Spider-Man, or B, fight Black Suit Peter as Miles. That's the, the big theories going on right now, and that would be either uh, choice, or, or better, if you could choose. Like, you know what, I want to fight Peter as Miles, or you know what, I want to fight Miles as Peter. Um, that would be fantastic in either way. Ethan, hope you're doing well too. Would you prefer to see a co-op uh, aspect in the sequel or something like Arkham Knight where you can play as uh, multiple characters? Fantastic question. Um, and that's a, another big theory is going on, like what they tease, like if that ending of, the, of this, you know, spoilers, where they're swinging together side by side, does not hint at all to the slightest possible fact of a co-op mode in the sequel, I don't know what else does. Because that sure as hell screams co-op to me. Uh, and I brought this up in one of my previous videos discussing Miles and something uh, relating to the story and gameplay. Is that Brian Intihar is the creative director of the first game, Spider-Man PS4. Brian Horton is the creative director of Miles Morales. It was previously confirmed several times in you know PlayStation blog posts that Brian Intihar is the main man working on the sequel, who's the creative director for the sequel for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, while Brian was leading this spin-off game with Miles. 
and they both did a fantastic job in both games, but Brian is the main one who's leading the front for the sequel. And the reason why I'm, I'm you know, stressing this is because Brian specifically said in a developer conference interview called DICE, I believe it was even in 2019, uh, with Ted Price, the, you know, the CEO of Insomniac Games, and they were talking about making co-op games fun. But why would they be talking about that when their most recent game that they were releasing was Marvel Spider-Man? And of course, that's because they did do a co-op game with Sunset Overdrive and also previously with Ratchet and Clank All for One. That's probably a game you guys might not be aware of, but they've done co Insomniac have done co-op games in the past. And I think they may have done something like that with Resistance. But for what I know, it's mainly been Sunset Overdrive where they had a co-op mode as well as um, uh, Ratchet and Clank all for one. So, I think, to answer your question, Ethan, I think they are trying their best to stick with this single-player story-driven focused narrative with Spider-Man or Spider-Men together with Peter and Miles going forward. But as far as gameplay goes, I would prefer it, like you mentioned, as Arkham Knight, where it's not fully two-player co-op, but it's in the sense that you can control whichever character you want to in whichever aspect during the story and switch between them seamlessly, almost like a GTA thing where you're GTA 5, where you're Michael, for example, and then you can switch to Trevor, and then Trevor is all of a sudden a completely different area in uh, Los Santos or wherever, drinking beer, you know, robbing a train or whatever, you know, crazy stuff like that, seamlessly switching between the characters and seeing what they're up to would be fantastic. So that's kind of like evolving from the gameplay facet from Arkham Knight's dual play system, what you're, what you're talking about is the dual play system. I know a lot of people probably and you can play with your friend swinging around the city as either Peter or Miles racing each other, fighting crime. But don't make it like Avengers, obviously. Don't make it live service. Don't make it four-player co-op, grinding for gear. That's obviously not the route that they're going for with this franchise. But if they go further into the... What I'm trying to say is if they go further into the co-op direction instead of the single-player direction, then I would get a bit scared. I want them to stay true to the core single-player story-driven narrative that we know and love for Peter and Miles. Do that again with the sequel, but have some, you know, dual-play co-op elements in there if you want to, you know, spice things up a bit. And, of course, that can go even further with the black suit adding in more combat abilities for Peter compared to Miles. And they also said, to reconfirm again, if you, if you guys don't know, that the sequel is going to be a Peter story. So, the first game was a Peter story. The second game, this, was a Miles story. Obviously, the name of the game, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. But... The sequel sequel, Marvel Spider-Man 2, or whatever it's going to be called, is going to obviously include Miles, now that he's his own Spider-Man, but it, they seem to stress, primarily, that the sequel itself is going to be specifically a core Peter Parker story, which is very, very exciting. And I'm super down for that, to see where they take his character next. Um, hopefully, if they're really deciding to stick with Ben, as the face model, that they can make him look ten times better than how he looks now in the remaster in, in Miles' game. Because as, as of right now, again, I brought this up in, in my post, so I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I say that he looks, and I've already mentioned this in the stream, but to reiterate one more time, he looks visually better than John. Does he fit the role of Peter Parker within the story-driven aspect of this game's universe as a nine-year-old nine years in Spider-Man, who's been Spider-Man for nine years, who's 24 years old? I don't think so. Not for me. So hopefully they can maybe mature him up a bit more in the sequel uh, and give him a bit of grit that maybe wasn't shown here in Miles' game for when we get those hardcore emotional moments between Peter struggling to get the black suit off him or maybe beating up Miles and he doesn't want to do that since he's obviously friends with Miles and sees him like a brother of sorts now. Uh, like a partner, not even a sidekick of Spider-Man, but a full-on partner to the one and only Spider-Man, how that could be involved in, this, in the narrative structure of the story. Um, and how those emotional moments that are so clear and apparent for both Peter's game and Miles' game, how, that could, how could that affect them going forward in the, the narrative portrayal of that? And that, that is what excites me the most 
as a fan. That's why I was interested in Avengers, because I was like, well, cool. I'm not really a fan of Kamala Khan from the comics, but how can they differentiate her more in the story for Avengers, you know? And they did a good job. I think they, voice crack, did a good job. <laughs> <clears throat> I think they did a good job with, the, with what they were given, because I definitely think that that might have been a Square Enix influence choice to make it a monetizable game to make them the most money. Sadly. Crystal, Crystal Dynamics is known for good story-driven games. The Tomb Raider series, uh, which is great. The first one's my favorite from them. It's fantastic. Um, let's do this one. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I, I think the story, again, is what I think influences and engages fans the most within these superhero games. That's why I'm worried about Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad. Specifically Suicide Squad, because... Uh, Warner Bros. Montreal have confirmed that Gotham Knights is not live service, which is great. But at the same time, I wonder if they do the similar live service structure of, um, what do you call it, Avengers, and incorporate into Suicide Squad just to make more money off of it. I don't know if that's going to be the best possible result for um, the game. And I, you know, I brought this up in my previous video, which has now been re- uh, uploaded or at least you can see it again on the the channel where it was taken down from Sony uh, being private because apparently those statistics were not supposed to be out there for the public yet but um, after a while I just decided to put it up again just in case because it's important news and it's kind of on the fault of the person who put that out there in the first place but basically what I'm trying to say is that if you guys don't know Spider-Man PS4 you know the base game on PS4 uh, confirmed to sell over 20 million copies worldwide in the span of two years. Never, has never been seen before for a superhero game, let alone an exclusive superhero game on one platform. And yet it sold more than any other superhero game in the history of entertainment. It's the highest selling superhero game of all time. And yet it's a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So. And that's because of the game, the story, the characters, the love and passion of Spider-Man is poured into the game. And uh, if they had stuck with that model for Avengers, what the president of Square Enix had previously stated, Yosuke Matsuda, said numerous times before Avengers came out that we're going to totally outperform both Spider-Man PS4 and the entirety of the Batman Arkham games, and clearly... As of right now, if you see the financial stats for uh, Avengers, it is the uh, lowest selling Square Enix property that they've ever done. And they've actually lost money when making it. They were supposed to make a hundred, they spent a hundred million dollars making the game, and they've only made $67 million back, which is insane. Now, I will stand around here while they're talking because there is one specific line of dialogue. I don't know if you guys have done this where you don't have to go right to the circuit breaker. You can stay here and listen to what they're talking about in their conversations. And one of their lines brings up Peter Parker, which is fantastic. And it hurts my soul because it's like, after knowing what happened to Aunt May and how he's brought up during this conversation is, is so good. Is so good. Uh, <laughs> Jaden Armistead. <laughs> Avengers is literally Marvel's bra moment. I agree. And that sucks, you know, I, I respect the developers at Crystal Dynamics and Marvel Games and Square Enix, but when they start to promote these business model microtransaction methods, and they've done it to themselves, you know, it's not like we feel bad for them for making a decision that we don't agree with, right? Like, that's the game they decided to make, and it did not work out in their favor. And we as the consumers are spending money towards that game, so you can't really feel bad for them when they're trying to make you pay more money for a product that isn't fully finished being developed. They've said, Franco, what's up, dude? Nothing's happened. We're just talking about the sequel, the symbiote, and Avengers. And what I was going to say is that Avengers... Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Sorry. Avengers lost money, but they also lost people's respect because of the amount of bugs that were featured in the game. That's right. They said publicly, Square Enix themselves, on a statement during one of their patches like months ago, saying that they found over 1,000 bugs in Marvel's Avengers that they have patched. Not even kidding. That's a real, factual post from a AAA gaming development company. And that is, in my opinion, unacceptable. 
because that's not how a game should be shipped in that state, and that is clearly why they're losing money, because of the poor product that they released. So me as a consumer, knowing that you're spending, and I bought, by the way, I'll show you proof if I can, you know, during this moment, I, I was a sucker because I wanted the game early and I bought the deluxe edition where it cost $80, I think. This, wait, I'll, I'll be quiet. Listen to this. So he's old, and yeah, he looks like he's 13. Okay, okay, sure, why not? No, that line of dialogue there, that little interaction makes my heart break because they wanted to have Christmas dinner, or at least, you know, Genki was wondering if Peter was going to have Christmas dinner with the Moraleses and Genki and Finn. But he can't because, first off, he's with MJ, but also because he would have had Christmas dinner with Aunt May, who's now gone, so my soul is crushed. And that hurts my heart to pieces. So that little line of dialogue is fantastic. Franco, I know, buddy. And I, I made that clear in the stream. At least I hope so. Franco says he loves the face. And that's fantastic. You know, if, if you're someone who loves Ben Jordan as Peter Parker, more power to you. I'm so happy you like the, the uh, adjustment, quote unquote, to the model of Peter Parker. It's just for me, and I'm sure a lot of you too as well. It's not in the minority of people who are not fond of the change or are still getting used to it. It's quite a lot of people, quite a lot of people who are still uh, very much disjointed from this swap from John Bubniak to Ben Jordan as Peter Parker. Uh, and seeing, you know, ever since John was revealed as Peter Parker in Paris Games Week 2017, um, the weird, that was what I was speculating over. If you guys remember my videos that I only did on my phone, for a year like how does peter look like who is he voiced by what's going on what's with the story because who do i who do we as fans who do i as the player connect to the most when playing this game is it spider-man sure but who is spider-man well for me that's peter parker and i love peter more than spider-man i love peter as spider-man and what he represents as that character now granted that is yuri as peter but we're also sadly seeing John as Peter. We're not seeing Yuri, even though he's fantastic in every way, shape, and form. We are seeing John in the role of Peter. Yes, in the role of Peter in the story. And that is who we were seeing through, you know, struggle and suffer and all that during those cutscenes. With the enhancement, of course, because of Yuri's performance bringing that to life. But we are looking at the character of Peter Parker, seeing that version as Spider-Man through John's portrayal. Um, and because of how special that first game was to me and still is to me, it's gonna be very, very hard for me to try and disassociate John, get that mental image out of my head of him as Peter Parker, and now move on to Ben Jordan, who they just instantly dropped onto us with the remaster and Miles. So, it's a tough one. It's it's harsh, it's, it's, a, it's a rough time for, for us Bubniak fans. But I, I like, Franco again, Kudos to you, brother. I love you, and I'm so happy that you like the new model of Ben's portrayal. I just think for me, uh, John is better suited to this version of Peter. Still, as I've said, I need to play the remaster for myself first before I make a final decision. I still currently do not like it, but I cannot give a full review of it until I play it for myself. So that is where I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt for the sequel going forward with Ben, as well as um, the remaster and Miles' small inclusion with Peter. Because luckily, that little addition does not um, take me out of the experience as much because it's just so brief. Even though, Well, act, let me rephrase that. It takes me out of the experience, for sure, but it does not uh, affect me as much given the small little involvement that we saw of Peter in the game without his mask on. What did take me out, though, is that super heartfelt flashback with Otto and Peter in the science lab the Oscorp Museum Center near the end of the game where you're playing as Miles and young Miles and young Finn uh, to go and see their science project on display. You look at the little, you know, moving metal object, and then all of a sudden, out comes Peter and Otto Octavius. And if you guys know me, I cried three times when playing the first game. I cried 
during that auto moment, during the final battle, I cried during Aunt May's death, and I cried during the credits. I think, personally for me, the auto moment got me more than Aunt May's death, to be honest. I was still heartbroken, like, for a week after both of those scenes. But back to back, I think the auto moment really crushed me. You know, specifically when he said, you were everything I wanted to be, and you just threw it away, that broke me. Like, to pieces. Because of, again, Yuri's performance and John's facial emotion conveying that performance better. So that's what you have to understand. Uh, and seeing that come back, you know, like, if that was John, like, the thing is, no one would be complaining about the face if they had just enhanced John. Is the, is the fact of the matter. But if, if that moment where they're talking in the museum and like, look how the metal interacts with the mesh and we could do that for the neural interface. It's like, Peter, you're, so gen you're a genius. You know, I, I'm so happy to have you with me. If that was John as Peter instead of Ben, I probably would have broken into tears. It's like, he's back with Otto and they're living their best life, but obviously we know what happens. It's terrible. But I'm willing to give Ben a chance Again, I need to play it for myself, but I'm, I'm very, I'm still adjusting even, what, two months after they announced the change? In September, I think? But it, it's uh, going to take me some time, for sure. But that's no disrespect to, the, to uh, again, the developers or Ben. It's just that it's uh, a personal viewpoint that I do not agree with. Um, yeah. Dargilly, the fact that they replaced him like that, I won't support them. Well, um, you have the total right to do that. And the thing is, I'm still, like, people are like, you're still gonna buy the remaster anyway. Everyone's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, that's the point. The point is I'm gonna buy every single Spider-Man product that Insomniac puts out, but I do not agree with their decision for the change. So I'm still gonna support them no matter what, because they're a fantastic studio and they obviously care about Spider-Man the character. But for me as a consumer, I'm not a fan of having to spend more money on a change I'm not a fan of. Like, that's why I don't buy the microtransactions for Avengers. That's why I don't buy the uh, special edition for a game. Like, I didn't buy the collector's edition for Avengers because I'm not a fan of how they went about promoting the game or the game itself as much as I would have been for Spider-Man, for example. Like, right when they announced the game, even in 2016, I literally went right to my GameStop to, like, can I pre-order this game? right now give me a collector's edition right now it's like even though they took two years to announce that i still put down money to pre-order the game oh yeah franco for sure do you mind joining of course after this cut scene i'll try and invite you into the party i may need to stop streaming in like 10 20 minutes but um for sure you can join in the party and chat with the crew and we can talk about the, the change as well Xavier Zandoval, apparently I've heard that John asked for more money, so they decided to recast Peter to Ben. I don't think that's the case. Uh, I, I interviewed John. If you guys remember, I interviewed him in the channel, and he is like one of the most kind-hearted, most humble people you'll ever meet. I don't think he would be doing that. If so, then that's his prerogative, and I understand why then he would have to change it. But um, I, he just sounded like he was very lucky. Honestly, the, the way he described it and the way that he went about talking about it, he himself sounded like he was lucky and humbled to be involved in the process of just being the face of Peter um, in the game's universe. Um, someone punched me. Hey, I have an off topic, but I'm curious. What did you think? Or who do you think is best girl in Persona 5? Well, if we're talking the base game, Persona 5, it's easily Haru. If we're talking royal, uh, canon is Kasumi, slash, spoiler, if any of you want to play Persona 5, Sumire. That's canon, no one can convince me otherwise, it's fantastic. Alright, so we're going to go to Aaron Davis, I'm going to, Ric Ricardo Chavez going crazy saying Futaba, sir, that is your sister. Not really, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but like in that context, that's like a sister complex thing, so, no, I mean, uh, man, sup, Dedra Key, sup from Malibu, Ev. thanks for uh, joining in the stream, bro. That's awesome. I hope you're doing well. Let's see. We'll change suits, and we'll also invite Franco to the party. So let's go with... Should we do the cat suit? Why not? We'll go for it. Also, slight off-topic, not canon. Makes no sense, because in the end of the Silver Lining DLC, we see him wear the Midtown High School shirt. But in here, and I also know in the remaster, too, he's wearing the Brooklyn Vision shirt, shirt which is very strange. And it feels like they retconned it, but okay. So we're going to wear the... Katsu, and I'm going to invite Franco to the party. I'm assuming you can still hear me, but you, you, you're not able to see the, um, what do you call it? 
the, the video. So, and I'm bad at inviting people to parties. So let's see if I can get Franco in here. Let's see, no. I'm really bad with starting up parties, bro. Unless, Franco, you can invite me to a party and then I can join you. If you're still in the stream listening to me. Also, by the way, uh, in case you guys don't know, I do accept any and all friend requests that you guys send me. Uh, that's why if you see on my, you can't see on the stream, but on my um, profile, it says I have over 376 friends online right now. So that is how attentive I am towards you guys for supporting me. And uh, I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So if I can uh, be able to friend you guys back, that makes it all worthwhile. Franco, are you playing on your PS5? I think it says that on the logo. Yes, I am. That is crazy, dude. That is cr So I didn't know that. See, I don't have a PS5, so I don't know all the little nooks and crannies of the features that are in. Wait, you guys, can you hear? Uh, let me know if you say yes in the chat. Can you hear um, Franco in the stream? Yeah. I also, I'm using the Ooh, so see, guys, Franco is is our key insight. If you guys don't have a PS4 like me, Franco is, is our key insight to how the PS4, the PS5 is utilized in comparison to the PS4. Um, what's my PSN? Uh, pa pa Pathanos, it is pretty easy. Evan Falarka, that's my, you know, name on my YouTube channel, Twitter page, PSN, all that. So, um, yeah, Ricardo Chavez, uh, Futaba is a hacker gamer. What more can you ask? That's true. But in my opinion, Kasumi is canon. Kasumi is, is canon. Oh, snap. We're wearing the uh, suit mod as well. Let's get rid of that. Um, there. Maybe six a combo. And we'll go back to... What did I have before? I had this. No. No. I. What did I have before? I had... Dodge time, reclaimer, venom overclock, venom power generation increases as health drops. I guess that one. Um, right, but Franco, how, so you, to your perspective, do you, you like Ben Jordan as Peter, but do you prefer him now over John? Okay, so I'll tell you right now. Oh, wait, guys, can you hear Franco in the chat too? I think you can. Okay. Oh, wait, Iron Gen, thoughts? on the rumor of next Spider-Man game taking place in Tokyo. So, before I get into that, what's up, Jake, by the way? Thank you for stopping by. You are a Chad amongst Chads. Thank you. Same thing with you, Franco. Thank you for tuning into the party. Um, uh, uh, Jake, that is a very interesting rumor, and it would certainly be different in comparison to what we have now, now in New York. Right now, I don't believe it because there's been no hints or inclination that that's where they're taking the setting. However, uh, and I'm also am going to do a collaboration about this with Slick Moff, Kobe, um, in a collab video whenever he's able to have free time because I know he's moving currently. But um, we're going to talk about that in the video. But for right now, it doesn't make sense from a narrative perspective since there's been no hints towards it. But from a gameplay perspective, it actually makes some sort of sense in a weird way because we've seen New York twice now on current gen and next gen. So we've seen New York in the first game and now we have it back again with Miles with a winter setting to make it uh, slightly different. Now obviously we want that to go further with the addition of uh, Brooklyn and Queens, you know, the other districts and islands of New York. but. At that point, we would already have been exploring New York for three games. So at that point, would you as the player want to keep exploring the same city over and over again with some slight additions? And then that's the, you know, the, um, the argument that some people are making like, well, Miles is just DLC with some stuff added into it with the winter and, and the Venom powers, and that's it, when I, to I would totally disagree with that. But to their claim, you could possibly make that argument if it is the same city in the official sequel, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, on, exclusively on PS5, with, again, Marvel's New York. Now, I love New York, and I want to be in the sequel again, but if they take things completely different, you know, from the ground up, like, you know what, we're going to take them out, do a far-from-home situation, put them in a, a completely different country, that would be insane. And it would be, it would be very appealing for my personal Persona 5 fandomness 
because Persona 5 takes place in Tokyo, and that would be a huge W on their part to do that. Um, but I would still prefer New York over anything else. Whoa, I did not mean to go backwards. I thought it was going to go forwards. Um, that's the thing of the air and cool camera angles, because you always have to move it. Okay, so I'll start with Miles first. Nice. What is, I would say, the biggest difference between the PS4 and PS5 version? Is it the ray tracing? Or is it like the dual? What I'm actually wondering, how is the dual sense? That is the make or break factor for me. Um, oh, Jared Guzman can't hear him. You know what, that might be on my part. Uh, let's see, party settings. I know for a fact that, that's why I don't stream you guys, because I know for a fact that's always bad. Party audio, prioritize party chat, adjust audio mix. Uh, let's see. Does that sound better, you guys? Some guy, what about Spider-Man going to San Francisco? Well, first off, I live there, so that would be a huge W if that's the case. Second off, um, I do not know, because again, there's been no hints, is the weird thing. There's been no hints about them taking Spider-Man out of New York. I would not like it, because that, again, is a far from home thing, and I'm not a fan of far from home. Taking him out of, that's right, uh, yeah, Avengers also took place in San Francisco, so I don't know if they would do that, even though they already had that in another Marvel game. And I know that would be a very Lethal Protector-esque thing for Venom, you know, in the comics, but that's for Eddie Brock in San Francisco and not uh, Harry. But who knows what they could do? Honestly, yeah, Ricardo Chavez, what hints is there for it being in Tokyo? Absolutely none. Zero. It's just that there's a rumor going around right now that uh, someone by the name of Luke Stevens, who is a known YouTuber, said that he's hearing uh, rumors and little hints and little speckles of info that the sequel could take place in Tokyo. And I do not like that. I want it to be in New York still, expand it to Brooklyn and Queens, keep it Marvel's New York, add in some other landmarks. But if they decide to do that, go a completely different setting, it makes sense. Because that way it would be different for gameplay and make you feel like, wow, this is a completely new next-gen experience with a totally different city. And Spider-Man's in the black suit, and Miles is there with him for some reason in Tokyo. But... For a, for a guy like Peter Parker, who cannot afford anything, really, he's struggling to make ends meet. Same with Miles, he's in high school. Uh, traveling to a completely different country, especially Tokyo, does not make sense. And his job, I mean, unless that relates to his job, actually, in, from the narrative perspective, he said he wants to be a scientist and maybe a teacher going forward, which I'm super happy about. Uh, if they decide to do that and incorporate it with him traveling abroad to teach with Kirk Connors or whatever or whatever happens, that can make some sense. But for me, I don't know, and, uh, Red Superman, Marvel, can Marvel Spider-Man 2 be on PS4? I do not think so. I think now, this that that is what Miles was. I think Miles was the core factor. Like, you can play it on PS4 and PS5. The sequel, that's gonna be like, you wanna play Spider-Man on next gen? You're gonna have to get a PS5. And that is a huge business tactic on their part. That's what they did for the first game. Like, you wanna play Spider-Man on PS, you know, on a next gen at the time, when PS4 was still, you know, relevant as next gen instead of now being current gen, which is crazy to say. Um, you want to play Spider-Man next gen? Got to get a PS4. It's only on PS4. So I think that's the same thing for this. You want to play Spider-Man 2 with the symbiote and Miles? Got to get a PS5. So I'm super, I'm, and I'm, I'm glad that they're doing that because that way that will enhance the experience even further with the amount of graphical capabilities and combat scenarios and Swinging them out, you know, the diversity of gameplay can be so different in comparison to what we have now. And already now, it's beyond fantastic. Uh, but, but Franco, to, to, uh, if you guys can hear Franco, I think you can now that I hopefully changed the settings. Do you think, for uh, uh, Miles for, on PS5, were you more encapsulated or blown away by the ray tracing, the 3D audio, or the DualSense controller? With how it feels. Did you feel the exaggerated swagger of a black teen, yes or no? <laughs> this is the most important question. 
right? That's okay. Nice. Wow. So that, so it like, it makes you more connected to the actual movement of what the character is going through. So, like, if you're swinging from, I don't know if this happens or not, if you're swinging from your left hand, do you feel the tension on the left side of the controller, or is it always on the right side with the R2 button? I think it's always on the right side with the R2 button. Uh, that's what the main thing is. Uh, I'm trying to do more stuff with I see. That's still cool, though, because I know that they're trying to make you, like, the big selling point is that you're in the game with the dual sense. And that was, like, what I, like, the... I'm gonna be honest, I was, before the change, obviously, was shown for Peter, I was honestly more excited for the remaster than Miles, because of the dual sense, because of how that game, and how perfect it was, with the inclusion of better looking graphics, ray tracing, 3D audio, enhanced performance, faster loading times, and the dual sense, made it like, wow, this is gonna be the definitive version of this game that I love with all my heart and soul. And it almost was. And it is for you, and that's fantastic. And I'll tell you why. So, so same thing with uh, the master, like, when you switch to the Right. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, dang, I don't know what's going on. MZ Najaj can't hear your friend. What is happening? And that's probably totally on my part. I'm not sure what is going on. Let's see if I can change that again. Adjust audio settings. It says party audio to max, chat audio, prioritize party chat. I've done it, unless it must be a setting on your end, Franco, I'm not sure. Let's see. There is delay, big delay, yeah. Apologies, guys, that's, I'm not really s suited for streaming, but it is what it is. I appreciate you for staying tuned as much as you are, though. That means a lot. Um, does your friend have audio share on? Maybe? I would hope so. I know I do. Here, let me see. If you guys can hear Franco in the chat. Oh, okay. I can hear you more. I, I, I think, I hope they might be able to. Um, let's see. If you're just uh, tuning in, guys, yeah, thank you good. for tuning in. And we probably are going to stop pretty soon. Kind of like barely. So you can hear them. It's just weird. The audio levels, I guess, are low. Interesting. Hmm, well, it, it's the best with what we can do. Um... But yeah, if you guys can't hear Franco, he's basically saying that the dual sense adds more depth yeah, to controlling right Miles and the remaster, and that also that the remaster version of Marvel's Spider-Man is his definitive version of the game compared to the PS4 version, and that it does not ha it does it does not allow you to have the exaggerated swagger of a black team. So Evan, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> that, that's the, I mean, that's the game, and that's the, what they wanted. That's what the fans obviously wanted to okay, see. I gotta, from I'm sorry, okay, I'm Glorious, flawless review. I mean, okay, I gotta, she's okay, I gotta ask you. Logic. Okay, I gotta ask you. When you first heard that for the first time, okay, when, they can when hear you now. Perfect. Nice. Okay. 
perfect. So I gotta ask you. Thank you guys for helping us out with that. Yeah. So let me ask you now. When you first heard that during Gangsta's review, what was your first initial reaction? I was like, wow, they really allowed this white man to say that. But it turns out it was a person of color. So I was like, wow, so they really shouldn't have gotten, like, so, someone so out of touch to review the game like that. But it was someone like Miles. I'm like, wow, so now I really don't feel bad, which is why it's been meme to death if you guys haven't seen that. Like, oh, and I love the little meme that someone did with Spider-Verse. If you saw it with Kingpin, he's fighting Miles in the train at the final battle of the game. And he's like, it's not always about the money, Spider-Man. It's about the swagger. <laughs> so he's like <laughs> talking about that like, wow. Okay, Kingpin, he's really going in for it. So, oh <laughs> man, it's just, wow. Like that was, um, man, I mean, I'm sure my review didn't do the game as, as good of justice as that guy did. So no, whew, that was not. a treat to watch. I, yeah, I was like, good luck for that guy getting a job. But he's still there apparently. So <laughs> it's like, wow. I guess it doesn't take that yeah. much for you to get hired at a game journalist site these days. I guess, I mean, hey, you probably have a chance if that guy can still have his job with that review. <sighs> well, fingers crossed, buddy. I mean, wow. I was like, wow, this is some steep competition with this guy, right? Like, damn. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was watching. I, so I did not watch any main review when Miles came out because I didn't want I didn't want to be spoiled and I wasn't obviously provided a review copy Same which here. is fine so I didn't want to see any new footage of the game even if it was just the opening stuff we already saw from Game Informer so I was just seeing that but then there was this one clip that someone just posted on Twitter of, of GameSpot's review with that scene of the the now infamous which is now less of a bad taste in all of our mouths with the tracksuit because he was wearing that during that that clip of the review he's like oh diving backwards and looking at the camera it was just full of the exaggerated swagger of black team like who in the hell are you talking about sir like what and are you, why are you what and, is and happening and why like, would you so, say such a thing like, like that <laughs> this is 2020 and this is what we're doing now huh like okay if you think that's a good uh, review i'm more power to you but damn that was intense to see that was hilarious mm -hmm. but wow oh. um <laughs> Game 2020 Online, my main man. Everyone go subscribe to Game 2020 Online. He does fantastic content. Uh, did Evan get lucky with this PS5? I did not, sir. This is still PS4 Pro gameplay. Looks shockingly good for what it is, but no, I, I did not. My efforts have been to no avail, but I will hopefully do my best to uh, acquire one down the line. You, uh, oh, you will, now watch please. this. I don't Come know if you guys on. are aware of this. Web tunnels straight through the Christmas wreaths. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Love I that. <laughs> oh. Doing that's such a thrill. Oh, mm -hmm. man. And Harlem, by the way, which is another, you know, addition that they put in with this game. Uh, and I'll let you talk about it, Franco, if you have anything to say about it, is Harlem mm -hmm. is alive in this game. Like, yeah. compared to the mm -hmm. first game, where <clears throat> the new whole of New York City felt incredibly detailed and thorough. But it's different with Miles because he's living here. Where Peter was living in Chinatown, I believe? With his apartment in the uh, beginning of the game? Or close nearby? Uh, yeah, yeah, Chinatown. Where it was? Yeah, Chinatown. Right. So, and they never really put that as a main facet. Like, oh my god, Peter has to, you know, protect Chinatown from Dr. Octopus. Like, no, he just kind of lives there on his own, doing his own thing. But Miles is from Brooklyn, born and raised. But he's living in this new setting of Harlem as Spider-Man. And since his mentor Peter is away, he's set. He's trusted to protect the residents of his new home and the people of New York in general. But mainly, he's residing in Harlem, so that in turn makes you as the player feel more connected to the city and specifically the setting of Harlem, which is so smart in and of itself to do that to make you feel more grounded as a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Literally, you're literally protecting the neighborhood of Harlem. And because of the culture it has in real life and that they included it so well in this game is astounding. So how they could improve that even further in like the sequel or something, I have no idea. But that would be very, I'm very curious to see what their plans are to improve the city or whatever it could be going forward. Mm -hmm. Man, but yeah, Superior Chris... The way he leaps off rooftops and flips backwards to face the camera before falling into a head for dive, just fully exaggerated swagger of black teen. Yes. Like, I think that has to be I Good think job, that has Superior to be meme Chris. of the year. That's a high five to you. Nailed like, it. That is meme of the year. That, that is, is meme. Of the year. That is a that's a uh, category of the game awards that needs to be 
implemented for this year. Meme of oh, the year actually, goes speaking to of gifting. exaggerated swagger of black team. <laughs> speaking of the game awards, I gotta ask you. Like, yes, sir. You must be like, you must be really pissed off that Persona Five Royal didn't make the game of the year. Dude, I'm vexed, bro. Like, come well. No, on actually, the bright I'm, side, I'm, it is nominated for best RPG, so that's yeah, fantastic. But, totally deserved but, however, it. I voted for it, so that's even mm -hmm. better. Uh, these bombs are gonna go off. I'm not yeah. even paying attention to the timer. Um, like, but uh, but there's yeah, one thing I, I was but like there's... vexed because. I understand Persona 5 Royal is, like, that. that is a remaster, in my opinion. You know, that is as best of a remaster as you could possibly get. Whereas Persona 5, for you guys who don't know, is an RPG that came out in 2017 on both PS3 and PS4. Mm -hmm, Whereas yeah. Royal, Persona 5 Royal, was actually only on PS4. So they made the graphics look better, they made it run better, they added more content, more story beats, more character interactions, a longer game with more, uh, you know, what they have in this game is semesters of school that you go through. So they had a whole other semester that you could uh, go into, which is fantastic. And my main man, Akira's canon love interest of Kasumi. So the story is fantastic in that game. The combat's phenomenal. Um, but I understand why it was not voted or nominated for Game of the Year because it was already not Game of the Year nomination for 2017. So re-release, like I would say, would you put Marvel Spider-Man Remastered for Game of the Year? Like, no, but I would want it to be nominated. So in that instance, yeah, it's it's not uh, a viable uh, candidate for Game of the Year. But best RPG, you bet. Sorry, 2020, that goes to Persona 5 Royal. I know it's probably going to go <laughs> to a Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because that's a yeah. there's a difference between a remake and a remaster. Remake Final Fantasy VII Remake is probably the best remake ever made. Uh, the best remaster ever done probably either goes to Marvel Spider-Man. Actually, in my opinion, probably not because of Peter Parker. But Royal yeah, no, is no, as, as much of a remaster as you can get with all the stuff that they included within it and mm -hmm. uh, keeping true to the main story with building upon mm -hmm. it with more stuff. But it, it, yeah, it, it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. For Actually, sure. Actually, but speaking of Miles Morales, like, you know, I'm very excited that it got nominated for Best Action Adventure Game and also Naji getting nominated for Best Performance. However... That is exciting. But there is only one thing that it's just absolutely just beyond frustrating is how it did not get nominated for Best Soundtrack. Like, what? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier in the chat. They were mentioning that, too. That is a huge L on their part. That I don't is know who decided these candidates, but... um. Lord, like, yeah, that, oof, mm -mm. no, like, John sorry, Paisano, I that, I, by I, the way, if you guys, I brought this up previously, but John Paisano, if you guys don't know, is the composer for Spider-Man and Miles Morales, he's a legend with this, like, mm -hmm. I don't know how he thinks of stuff, but it's so good, and so fitting mm -hmm. for the character of Spider-Man and Miles, specifically compared to Peter, um, and his score, and God, oof, so crazy. Shadow Marauder, but, not gonna lie, you deserve so many subscribers. It's because of you, Shadow Marauder, that I'm able to do stuff like this, so thank you. That means the world to me. And speaking of that, I think we are out of time, folks. I think that could be it. For our first live stream, this again, I've done the same thing. I've live streamed the whole entirety of the game for Spider-Man PS4 in the past. Um, I did the whole game from start to finish with that live stream of, of videos. For that game back in 2018, I will do the exact same thing for Miles Morales in the few next upcoming days. Um, so stay tuned for that if you want to see more videos and collabs with me and awesome people like Franco joining in the party, chatting about this game and awesome stuff relating to <laughs> Spider-Man uh, and just mm -hmm. games in general. Iron Gen also is going to do some more videos on his channel as well. If he's still here, definitely go subscribe to him. Same thing with the other people that came in here earlier, Game 2020 Online, News to Astonish. I think I saw our boy Talented Gamer HD at one point. He's the main man. Joseph Witty too. He wasn't in here, but he's the best. Um, and also, uh, oh yeah, I love it. Miles is doing his little beatboxing thing. That's fantastic. Um, uh, more videos about Spider-Man coming soon. I don't know when, because I'm also in the middle of doing a lot of these online course classes that take up a bunch of my day. But when I have free time, I'll do another ranking video about the visor mods and the suit mods because I know you guys were interested in that for the first game with the suit mods so I'll do it again here for Miles Morales and then also of course discussing the sequel the future of Insomniac's franchise 
uh, the, the rumor speculation of Tokyo with Slickboff in a collab, and uh, as, well, as well as other sequel-related matters, too. And whenever there's more updates from Insomniac and stuff, and maybe even Avengers, if you guys are interested in the Kate Bishop DLC, I will go over that. I'm personally not looking forward to it that much, but I'm sure some of you are, and that would be fun to talk about if you're interested. But... That is it. Franco, any last words or any anything you just want to discuss about as a topic discussion before uh, we hop off? Um, honestly, I got nothing. F man of I got nothing. few words, but great words once spoken. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks. Of course, bro. Um, all right, guys. I think that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. This was fun. We just kind of did the beginning opening of Miles Morales. He had Christmas dinner. Talked to Finn. Right now, actually talking to Rio. Talking to Genki. Uh, saw, you know, discount Han Tallinn. I mean, Peter Parker. My bad. So uh, that was Jordan. interesting. And That's next, ben. we will go to Teo's to save Spider-Man the cat. And then do probably some more side mission content with the Friendly Neighborhood Spider app. Which is great. Um... Other than that, I think that's it. I know I'm terrible at reading the uh, chat, as always, but I will try and do better at that once we continue forward with the streams in the future. But until next time, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Game 2020 Online, uh, do, if you uh, if the party open, it can be after the stream is over. I, I can invite you, actually, if you want to join in. Uh, and you can talk to Franco and myself, um, and that'd be fun. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Zone Control. Thank you, everyone else, Chris and, and Ethan and, and uh, Edwin as well, who, who popped up as well. Um, and everyone else who just joined in, leaving your support, leaving a like, leaving a nice comment. That's more than enough. So thank you all. You're fantastic. Enjoy the holidays. We're getting close to Christmas. Thanksgiving and Black Friday just occurred, but now we're getting slight, slow and slow closer to, and of also course, the Christmas. Game Awards, That's going to so be awesome. Keep your eyes on that because you never know what might happen there. You do never know what might happen. Exactly. Great point. That and, if again, if, if something happens at the Game Awards, I don't think we'll see Spider-Man for, you know, Insomniac's game. But if they do something, that'd be crazy, but we will see. For well, sure. I mean, um, I mean, Tom Holland will be there, so... Tom Holland will know. actually be there, that is true, and we're not making a joke. Tom Holland will literally be there at the Game Awards promoting Uncharted, the movie? Or is it just Maybe. in general he'll be presenting some award for the game, or for the show? I mean, I think he might talk about the movie, but maybe he's just mainly there to present an award. Right. But we'll see. That'd we'll be cool. see when we, I'm interested comes... in the Uncharted movie, and I like Tom Holland as an actor. I'm just not a fan of the written material that he's been given as Spider-Man with Far From Home and uh, <laughs> certain elements of him in Homecoming. But for the most part, he's fine. And then, of course, again, I would have the same issue if uh, Peter Parker's designed the game. If he looked like Toby, Andrew, Nicholas Hammond, whoever, I still have the same problem because I thought John was the best. But I'm willing to give Ben a chance. Down the line, we've already went over I that. But guys, enough. again, Honestly, thank you. So, oh, wait, what was that, Franco? Uh, no, I was just going to say, I think your opinion might change it when you play the remaster. Maybe. We'll see. In my we'll, opinion. We'll, we'll see. We'll I don't see. know if we'll I'll see. like him more than John, but I'll probably at least like him a bit more than I do now. That's probably the what I'm, you know, summarizing. That's probably the most positive outlook that I can have towards it now, is that once I play it, which again, if you guys are wondering, I will do a live stream of Marvel Spider-Man Remastered whenever I get a PS5. So that way you can see my live reaction to John's, uh, to Ben's scenes in the game compared to John. And that'll be very interesting to see and go over. But yeah, uh, we will see what happens for sure. But yes, Franco, you're absolutely right. And I'm glad you like uh, the model of Ben now for yourself more than John. That's fantastic. Same mm -hmm. thing for all you guys out there who like Ben. As Peter, that's great. No um, slack on your opinion. No, you know, not trying to discuss that or deteriorate that from your viewpoint anyway. Just I, I think differently. I'm glad that you like it. For me, I got to be convinced otherwise in a more thorough manner. So once I'm able to actually go through with that with the remaster, you can see my live reaction, experience the game with me when playing it. That would be fantastic but until then we're sticking on ps4 ps4 pro looking great actually for miles just on this one shot right here he looks fantastic um but yes guys i've been babbling on long enough stay tuned for the channel for more videos 
more collabs, more awesome people coming on the channel, and more videos about Spider-Man, because that is what it's all about. And again, the Spidey Squad is all thanks to you guys, and we wouldn't be here without you, so thank you for all your support. Until next time, True Believers. Thank you. Thank you all so much for watching. Franco says thank you, too. If you guys can't hear him, he's the best. Again, I, I couldn't do these oh, streams no, again please. without Franco I keeping tabs in the chat, because he's the main mod who always helps me out, because I'm terrible at reading and playing <laughs> things simultaneously. Well, I'm glad to help you out any way I thanks, can. Thanks, bro means the world all right guys of course with all that said hope you had a fun time i sure did we will continue on next time maybe that might be in a couple days from now a few days we will see but until then stay spectacular spidey fans peace out bye everybody